Nightingale currently has an exploit, allowing players to fold or boost their ingots in a way that makes weapons, melee or ranged weapons, do an insane amount of crazy damage, being able to one tap nearly any creature or boss in the entire game. But what happens beyond that? That will be eventually fixed or there will be a server wipe. What will it look like crafting the very best weapons in Nightingale? But what if I told you that you could still one tap majority of the bosses on extreme in Nightingale without using any exploits at all? Just comes down to crafting the right combo combination of clothing and materials to craft your one shot cannon of doom and today we are focusing on the Eclair Paradox Shotgun. This is the more advanced shotgun, being able to fire two rounds simultaneously or one round at a time. Now the crazy thing about the Eclair Paradox Shotgun is that it has some of the highest damage in the game, getting damage close up to 7,000 per round, meaning firing two shots is one insane amount of damage that you can put down, especially at close range. So I've been doing some tweaking and testing, and when I first set out to try craft a shotgun that would one tap any of the bosses, I didn't get it quite right. You can see in this first attempt versus the sun god on extreme in the desert hunt ascended realm, it took a fair few amount of goes. Lots of rounds, but at the same time makes most of the enemies very easy to deal with because with such high strength and with the various physical and magical attributes like charms and infusions, does mean that the sun god gets knocked back and can't really attack or do anything. Basically, shotgun has a crazy amount of crowd control, allowing you to really have a lot of time to maneuver and calculate your next decision. But taking this long and this many shots to kill a sun god on extreme, I knew we could do better. So we're going to go on a journey and we're going to craft the very best paradox shotgun in a way that we can one tap nearly any creature in the game without any exploit. No folding. And this will be, for now at least, probably one of the best builds you can do. There will be some minor min maxing that you could do to squeeze a little bit extra out of this, I'm sure, but we're getting very close to the roof. And this will be without using any potions, but we may use a certain minor card to help get us there in the end okay let's get into it our journey begins on a beautiful morning here in the advanced realm and we're going to start with crafting the very best shotgun now what materials are we going to be using well when it comes to ranged weapons and since we're going for a crazy amount of damage we're going to go for inadia and remember a good place to find inadia is in your forest advanced realm or practically in any of the forest realms it's probably the preferred realms to be finding it. Keep in mind you will need a pick or pickaxe over level 230 to gain access to an Adia unless you're lucky enough to find it in the desert and using that other trick I've mentioned in other videos, I'll put a link in the description. Outside that, but what else do we need? Well, important thing to remember too is that currently in Nightingale, which will change at some point, we have a different name for the shotgun. The Cedar Valve shotgun is currently what it's named in game, but when you build it, it will be called the Eclair Paradox shotgun. So just make sure that's something you're aware of. Easy to get confused there. Before we go on to what wood we'll use, it's important to understand that you will need the crude T set in order to be able to build and construct the Paradox shotgun. So the augmentation you're looking for is crude T set. You could also go for the jaunty bicycle, which will also give you access to the Paradox shotgun. So if you want to purchase the crude T set, you'll find that in the desert antiquarium realm. The jaunty bicycle, that is a much later augmentation to purchase. You'll find that in the in the forest ascended hunt realm. Now, of course, before we even build the augmentation that we require, we need to be able to purchase the Paradox shotgun. And where will we find it? From my understanding, the only place you can currently purchase it is at the watch. So once you get to the watch, it will just be a matter of going to your left once you enter and talking to Ida or whoever it is for you and that will be your miscellaneous trader, miscellaneous essence trader and you'll find it right under firearms. Now they've reduced the price to 100 so all of these will be much more easily attainable for everyone. So just to summarize, yep, we need the T-set or the jaunty bicycle that will give us the right augmentation to be able to go into our workbench and then craft the CWL shotgun aka the Paradox. Okay, so back to what we'll need. So we know we'll be using an ADF for the marksman barrel and the refined action. What about the handle? Well, the handle is going to be one of the most critical factors when trying to extend the damage potential for the Paradox shotgun. So what we'll do is we'll start with the process of getting the handle because in order to get the handle, it's not straightforward. Now, there's a couple of alternatives I'll give you to use for your handle, but we're going to look at the very best option, in my opinion. Now, in order to get this handle, we're going to need to venture into one of the 
ascended realms into the desert ascended realm specifically and we're looking for the timber knot the young right here this guy and in particular we're looking for the fabled timber knot which may be a bit tricky to get you may find that you can't find it as a fabled creature where the wolf icon comes up on your map but you could also just try farming the non-fabled and hope that you do get a fabled drop because that can happen as well you can get fabled material from non-fabled creatures it's just a rare percentage of that drop to happen but for us we're going to try to find it in the desert and i'll just quickly show you at least what it looks like just so you have a clear picture but you've come across it before okay so here we are in the hunt desert realm now i suggest what we will do in order to increase the yield from harvesting creatures we want to play the hunt card so the hunter card this will increase the yield gathered from slain creatures it also increases our damage to the weak points so the card applies a slight weak point damage, slight non weak point damage decrease, increase the yield and gathering from slain creatures. This is what we're after. So we're going to play this. If you want to be able to craft the hunt card yourself, you need to head to the hunt desert realm and talk to the essence trader there. Make sure when you play your cards, you don't run away from your, uh, it's called transmuter because I've noticed if you do run away, a lot of the times it doesn't seem to apply the card. That can definitely happen even by standing in front of the transmuter, but this is just one thing I've noticed. Sometimes you do have to play the card twice. It's currently a little bit buggy, but just something to note. So I will generally try play the card twice just to make double sure it is applied. Now you might not be able to do that. That's okay. Just try use a cleansing card first because that should increase the chances of it working first time. But from my experience, you don't need to use the cleansing card because generally it just works straight up. So I'm just going to apply this a second time just to double make sure. Okay, so we should be good. That should be applied. We've got the hunting on. So additionally, you can also get even further increased yield from harvesting if you play the hunter's eminent card. So this will increase the yield from slain creatures, but it increases a lot more than if you were just to play the hunt card. The hunter's eminent card can be found in the desert ascended provisioner realm. Be able to purchase it there from the essence trader. I love how these guys look. They look freaking crazy. It's gone. <laughs> we'll quickly see if we can one shot this without anything else helping. Couldn't one shot it, but uh, you can see we'll we'll be able to do that with a few, few little bits of tricks. Okay, so we're on the hunt for some of the fabled creatures. So we'll head down to the bottom of the map. Okay, so the first creature is not the one we're after. So we'll try the one up here. Okay, it's not the fabled creature we're after either. This is where it can be a bit tricky to hunt down this particular resources. Well, we ran around the map and we didn't find one of them. So you can see this can be kind of tricky and elusive getting this resource, but I'm determined to show you. So we'll, we'll keep trying. Okay, so these are the guys I'm talking about. So it's not a fabled one, but we'll see if we get any kind of luck. Now make sure you do get very close and you kill them as quickly as possible because uh, once they start running it's very hard to catch up to them okay so it's tier three it's not fabled but at least that gives you an idea so getting that type of wood takes a long time at least for me it is super rare but it is one of the best you can pretty much get in the game and so in this instance i was in the provisioner desert the provisioner ascended and that's because i think there's only two or three realms that have those the uh tier three seer eaten wood or the fabled one thing i forgot to add that will help find the seer eatons is using a is using your spyglass that will definitely help you find to see if there's any around at all just makes it a bit easier, something to consider to do. Okay, so when it comes to crafting the handle, we have a few different choices. So the highest damage is the tier 4 swamp wood with a range damage of 25%. However, if we can get the tier 3 fabled seer eaten wood, that gives a range damage of 20% and a range rating of 30%. Now the range rating is really important for shotguns, especially if you don't plan to run the sniper charm. And there's definitely a fair few reasons you would consider not running that charm. And that's why for the most flexibility, and in my mind, the best kind of build for a shotgun at least the tier three fabled seer eaten wood is going to be the best you could do another build for a shotgun where you're more focused on critical damage or getting critical hits that's when you'd be looking at your tier five desert wood which has critical damage and range rating or you'd be looking at your tier two or three fabled eaten wood if you could get it which also has a very nice critical damage okay so when it comes to crafting the wood we need to first make sure that we craft the wood into gilded lumber then i believe the handle requires poles and we also get to use fastness so we have two opportunities here to add metal or ingots to increase the range rating to increase the range damage or the critical damage so depending on how you want to build it this is a really important step okay so for so for the high damage we're going to go the t3 fabled seer eaten wood we're going to turn that into lumber 
So then from Lumber, we go to, to the Gilded Lumber. We would select our Fable. Ingot, we're going to use the Inadia again. This will give us good range damage and range rating. After the Gilded Lumber, we'd go to Pole. We'll be using the Gilded Lumber that we just got and creating a Pole. And then after the pole, we go to handle, use the pole we just created, and then we got the fastness. So you can see here, we get an excellent boost. Now, if you were just to create the handle, just using the pole with lumber, it's about a reduction of 50% of its potency. So it's really important to do the gilded lumber whenever you can, when you're crafting anything, whether it be the handle, pole, or stock, definitely try fold it as much as possible without obviously using the current exploit of boosting and folding ingots. Okay, so we've got everything we need. We're going to craft the handle. You can see here, we got an eight. 80% damage, range rating 30%, movement speed as well, like very nice. So let's craft this. One thing I forgot to mention, there's no real augmentations that I know of that will boost the wood any further. Do let me know if that's not right. But as far as I know, you can just get some augmentations that will decrease the time when crafting anything with wood. And same when it comes to cards. From my understanding, there's nothing that will boost your wood's stats. There's only stuff that will boost the end product, like the lumber mill or something like the forge cards. Lumber mill and forge cards we will be using when we go to craft the weapon. In fact, we'll apply that right now. Okay, so we've got everything we need. We've got the marksman barrel, got our handle. So I'll just show you the difference between uh, the two different pieces of wood that you might use for the highest damage. So you can see here, range damage 1800 with the fabled seer eaten. And then if we go to the swamp, it also has less range damage and the range rating is lower for the swamp wood. So seer eaten, gonna be the pick of the choice, but some very, very nice stats here with the starting range damage of 1800. Okay, so let's craft this one. Okay, and here it is. So, and here it is, here's the finished product. It Claire Paradox Shotgun using Anadia for the metal and the fabled Seer Eaton Tier 3. So probably the highest range damage. I really wanted to do a critical damage build, but I've had a lot of trouble trying to find the Tier 3 fabled Eaton in the forest realm. If you have any ideas or where the best place is to find it, let me know. Might make another video to do the best critical damage shotgun okay so that's building the shotgun now we also have to consider two very important pieces of clothing and that's going to be your hat which allows you to gain range damage of 82.8 percent there might be one higher version to this which might be the uh but there may be one that has slightly higher range damage definitely let me know in the comments if there is but as far as I'm aware, the Explorer's Hat is going to be the best pick for your ranged weapons. And in particular, we're going to make the Explorer's Hat, which you can find in the Desert and Swamp Ascended Hunt Realm. You can purchase it from the Essence Trader there. And I'll show you why this is the best hat. When going through the hats, and I haven't unlocked them all, so there might be one that's even better. But basically, we're looking for one that would require any kind of metal. For instance, the Hermetic Veil, lining, and an ornament and cloth. You think it'd be something like the embellished head wrap would be the best because you can use an ornament, a cut gem, which is the star ruby is the only ruby that does anything for range and your cloth which is jana you would think something like this would be the best because you can actually include some anadia but it turns out when comparing the end result the explorer hat far exceeds whatever you will get from the embellished head wrap and you have to keep in mind that gear level doesn't really make any difference or matter at all once you reach the end game that all becomes about stats so it doesn't really matter that this has a higher gear level compared to this hat we're just focusing on what will have better stats because the, the gear score is my understanding just acts as a gateway of progression within the game it doesn't actually in impact your stats. Could be wrong there, please correct me if that's not right. So if, as far as I'm aware, this Explorer's hat's gonna be your best bet. If you have a hat that has higher stats, definitely let us know in the comments. So to craft the Explorer's hat, I just went with Jana. I also went for cloth is Jana. It seems to be worse if you go swamp fiber. Again, it doesn't make any difference for the range stats depending on what you pick. So we're just gonna go for the Jana thread because it gives us the maximum health. Again, let me know if you found a better combo. We'll quickly try the Hermetic Veil just to show you another example. You can see straight away that the range damage is far less than the Explorer hat. So for however the stats work with clothing, if anyone understands, definitely let us know. But yeah, just stressing the Explorer's hat is gonna be a pick. For your gloves, it's a no-brainer. It's the Hermetic Gloves. We get to add Buckles from Anadia, which already gives it a good range boost. And then if we add some Jana Leather, probably the best result we've got that I know of. You can see here we've got Jana, Anadia, Anadia, range damage of 8%. We go the Explorer. It's more tilted towards melee damage. And everything else seems to only give you a marginal range damage. So for now, as far as I know, Hermetic Gloves are going to be your best pick. Now, keep in mind, when you do cr craft your clothing, you may as well put it under the Greenhouse card, which should give you these cold resistance weight fire resistance stealth but for me when i've tried that i don't know how that translates into the end result not sure if it's bugged 
But um, normally when you're crafting clothes, you'd use something like the greenhouse card for extra benefits. I just realized we've crafted the paradox, but uh, the forge card did it take effect. We're gonna have to quickly recraft the paradox just so we get these extra bonuses from the forge or lumber mill card. The other thing to note is that your saddle also gives a plus critical stat to your weapons. So it's a good idea to have that close by to your workbench. At least that's my understanding. So we just quickly craft it again, making sure that we have the fabled seer eat on. And we can already tell we've gotten a bit more of a bonus here from crafting it under this forged or lumber mill card. So very important if you want the best stats you can get, lumber mill or forged card. Okay, so comparing the two different paradoxes, one with the forged or lumber mill card, one without, you can see there is definitely a reasonable bonus there. It's not too significant, but definitely helps. So the end result once you upgrade to your tier three is something around these stats. Now, if you followed all these steps where you've included the explorer's hat, hermetic gloves, and you've spiced it up with the forged or lumber mill card, you should end up with a tier three paradox with these stats. Now for, for the infusions, I've used the clarity infusion, which gives you a range rating of 15%, tier three, great for shotguns the conveyance infusion which is range damage tier 3 15 percent and then death infusion critical damage 7.5 percent we'll come to the charms in a sec i just wanted to mention your explorer's hat will get these kind of stats of 82 percent once you upgrade it to tier 3 and you apply the same infusions we just applied to the, the shotgun we'll apply here and we'll provide the extra stats to get you to that 82 percent range damage so to get the clarity infusion you need to go to the antiquarium desert realm the conveyance infusion Infusion is the Astrolade Desert Realm. Death Infusion critical damage is from your Forest Astrolade Realm. Now, the last thing we're going to need to be able to one shot most things is we're going to need the Duelist card, as well as the various Buckshot cartridges like Fire, Ice, Lightning, Poison. Your Fire Buckshot is found in the Ascended Herbarium Desert Realm. The Lightning is in your Forest Ascended Herbarium Realm. The Ice is in your Desert Ascended Gloom Realm. And your Poisonous is in the Swamp Ascended Hunt Realm. Now, the Duelist card, that's going to do a good amount of boost to your damage. Damage, and you can get that very early on. You can get the Duelist card in your Desert Antiquarium Realm. Basically the first realm you go to after your abeyance. Now that we have all that, we are ready to go one shot the Sun Giant in the Desert Hunt Ascended Realm on Extreme. Now apologies, I did not try this on the Vault just due to how much time this has already taken. If you play the Duelist card, it's probably going to get one to two shots, maybe three shots to kill it in the Vault. I'm not certain, but it'll be very close and it'll probably be the most impact you can do. The other thing, I forgot to mention is the different charms. So right now I have the charm of the sniper. When it comes to charms, we have some interesting choices. The charm of ferocity is one we're going to try right now. Currently I have the charm of the sniper, which is good to extend your range rating but we've already got such a high range rating. The shotgun has limited range, so having the Charm of the Sniper is actually going to start to add a lot less value compared to some of the other charms we can use. Perhaps one of the best charms for ranged weapons is one of the hardest to use, but could be the most powerful. The charm of Steadiness. This charm increases the wearer's damage after each successful ranged attack, which means every time you land a hit consecutively, your damage is going to increase. I'm not sure what the roof of this is, but as far as I know, I think this can go very high, but the increase will be lost after every missed shot. So this is kind of one of the more incredible ones. So in theory, we could one shot anything if we were to get three, four, five consecutive hits on enemies. And this is great for bosses because those targets are very big and that's going to stack leading to a potential chance where if we had little minions around a big boss, we could hit them multiple times, then try hit the boss to deal maximum damage. There is also the charm of morale where you do the moats. I'm not a fan of doing emotes, but if you want to try this, I've tried this. I didn't notice too much benefit to it, but let me know if this is a great choice or not. But for this example, we're going to try the Charm of Ferocity. So this is going to remove critical hits, but I think we get like a 50% increase to our base damage. Not sure if it's 50. Don't quote me on that. Let me know what it actually is if I've got it wrong. That's just something I heard. So we'll apply this one because keep in mind, the Charm of the Sniper is not going to help us too much now because there's no way to actually extend your weapon's range. All the weapons have defined range. The only thing that we can impact is the damage of the range fall off, not how actual far the bullets can travel, is my understanding. And from my testing, okay, so we're going to play the Duelist card, gives us a significant damage increase. And remember, you can play this Duelist card in the vault. 
Yeah, here is the bad boy, the sun giant. Now this is on extreme ascended, hunt ascended realm. And we need to sort of time this perfectly. Otherwise you won't get the one shot. You sort of want to wait till he jumps, crawls, uh, till he sort of does this animation, goes to uh, let you present him with a gift. And we're going to hit him right in the jewel. <laughs> his big jewel, the, the jewel around his neck. That's what we're going to hit. If you hit that precisely right, you will get a one shot. If you don't, it will take two to three shots, but you can do it in one shot. You just have to have the jewelist card on and you have to hit it precisely at that moment when he's sort of doing that blue thing in his hand that should land you the one shot but i hope you got something out of this this is how to make one of the most potent versions of the paradox shotgun one of the highest dealing guns in the game if you did get anything out of this please consider liking subscribing it takes a ton of time to do this sort of stuff so appreciate it if you can help me out no pressure though do whatever you got to do thanks very much catch you next time peace